Yes, we do. We need those strategies. Those strategies for living. As long as we're living. As long as, yeah, as long as we're living, we're needing some strategies. Hey, are you ready? Are you ready for your daily dose of radio rehab? I certainly hope so. And if you are, or even if you're not, welcome. Welcome into 1017 FM, 710 Keel. Welcome into Strategies for Living. I'm Dr. David McMillan, and she is psychotherapist, PLPC, Lauren Leon McMillan. That's right. And that's... Uh, that's who you are. Uh, uh, and, and you don't even time I checked, yeah. You don't even need to rethink that, do you? Well, I mean, I think it's always worth rethinking that the answer to the question, who are you? But I ran into a, a, a book recently, mm-hmm. and it is called, Lauren, Think Again. Mm. It's the power of knowing what you don't know. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it just struck me that, wow, this may be a book that is uh, extremely important for us right now, you know? Yeah, and it goes along with a lot of the themes that we often talk about, right? I mean, just the word, the phrase itself, think again, Yeah. uh, to me brings up the, you know, the idea of recognizing, right? Exactly. The author is Adam Grant, and uh, it, it, the book is a New York Times number one bestseller. And, um, Actually, uh, you know, it has been, um, it has gotten rave reviews. Uh, Brene Brown, <laughs> uh, who herself, number one New York Times bestselling author, yes. says that this, this is the right book for right now. Yes, mm-hmm. learning requires focus, but unlearning and relearning oh. requires so much more. It requires uh you know, choosing, choosing courage over comfort. And uh, that's some Mm. of what Grant writes about. Um, You know, he kind of weaves together storytelling and research to help build the intellectual and emotional muscle that we need to stay curious. Mm. And, you know, we talk all the time here on Strategies about the importance of being a curious student. So I thought, I thought this book is uniquely suited for us. So I thought we would talk a bit today about what you can find in the book. Maybe some people will want to read the book after we talk about it. Even if you don't, I think there's some lessons that we can glean from it, right? Sounds like a great plan. I'm excited. We're going to think again today here on (laughs) Strategies. Folks, thank you. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being a part of Strategies for Living. We appreciate our sponsors who make it possible. The Robinson Film Center and Azalea Cleaners and Learning RX and Pintail Roofing oof, oof. and the Balanced Life Wellness Center. Back in a moment, we're going to think again here on Strategies. Come back and think with us. Hi, this is Jay Merle for Pintail Roofing. Let's talk about quality. When you hire Pintail to build your roof, here's what you can expect. Quality and quality control are the most important concerns for us at Pintail. And you need to know that Pintail stands tall with swift and professional performance on any warranty call. This is our most important policy. And remember, we're your neighbors. We'll be here for you for the long haul. Our family's lived here for over 100 years and we aren't going anywhere. On the commercial side of Pentel's business, our fluid applied roofing solutions can save thousands of dollars over conventional commercial roofing options. Call Pentel at 226 Roof for a free inspection of your home or commercial building. That's 226 7663. Pentel Roofing. What's the condition of your roof? Tune in daily to find your way. Strategies for living every single day. Healthy mind, body, spirit, glow. With the radio rehab, you should know. Strategies for living, lifting you higher daily. Go- 
thrills of life, reach the sky, heal and grow with every beat, find your balance on your feet. <laughs> yeah, welcome. Welcome in. Welcome in to right on. 1017 FM, 710 Keel. Welcome into Strategies for a Living. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> when you start playing, you know, with AI, uh -huh. anything can happen. That's right. I like it. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I hope so. I've, I've got more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I, won't, I won't. Maybe we won't. Um, you know, I, I'll think again about uh, dumping them all at one time, but <laughs> we've got more to share anyway. Sounds good. So uh, the book is called Think Again. It's the power of knowing what you don't know. And uh, welcome, welcome in, folks. Welcome into Strategies for a Living. And uh, we're talking about thinking again today. So it's it's a book about the importance, Lauren, of rethinking and unlearning mm. so i mean you know we 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 can only uh we can only contain so much right right and sometimes to put in new information we've got to be able to unlearn you know mm some other information yeah. so it encourages this book encourages folks to stay flexible yep. to stay open-minded and willing to adapt their views based on new evidence right right and i think this is something that we need to talk more and more and more about yeah. as people you know because we we do emphasize learning we know learning is important right and yet absolutely and yet sometimes even more important than learning is the unlearning and sometimes that can be an even more um difficult uh, oh difficult I, process. I, I think i think especially from our ego mind mm. point of view yeah, you know time. that keeps you know a lot of us stuck in a you mm. know in a, in a big cycle for a, even a lifetime right right and so i think that's why books like this are extremely important and what you know one of the things that grant argues is that he, he argues that intellectual humility mm. and the ability, the title of the book is Think Again. So the intellectual humility and the ability to think again mm -hmm. are crucial skills in our rapidly changing world. Right. And so let's talk about some of the key themes in the book, if okay. you will. Okay. So one of the things that he talks about first is the value. Well, why why would we want to? What's the value of of <laughs> rethinking? It's priceless. Let me just put that out there. Well, yeah, first because he he says you know humans. What we do is we tend to hold on to our opinions and beliefs mm. very tightly, maybe even too tightly. Maybe even so much that we become fixated or even, uh, dare I say, we crucify ourselves. Yeah, maybe so. We don't, mm. we, we, we don't, we hold on to those beliefs and opinions so tightly without re-examining them. Mm. And so what he does is he introduces an idea that... We, we want to treat our thoughts and opinions like scientists. And this, mm -hmm. I like this, see? Yeah. I, I, because what are scientists? Scientists are always open to changing their minds. Ideally. And so he says, let, let, you know, become a scientist, think like a scientist, and be open to changing your mind as new data or new evidence comes in. Right. Right. And I, one of the, th you know, one of the things that he talks about is he talks about the dangers of overconfidence. Hmm. So in Think Again, he discusses the pitfalls of overconfidence and how that overconfidence can blind us to our own ignorance. And so he emphasizes the need to uh, adopt a mindset of curiosity. Mm. 
Mm. And the curi- the, this mindset of curiosity is where we question our assumptions and we seek continuous learning. I mean, you know, how many times have you heard me say, if I live to be 105, I hope I do, I want to remain a curious student right up through the dying process. Yeah. I want to be a, a curious student of what the dying process uh is and means and is about because it'll you know uh, to my knowledge i haven't been through that before maybe i have but I, to, well, my, to my knowledge i haven't well, been not in the physical sense no, right no but i think we we all truly have been through uh some form of uh dare i call it like a death portal right a, yeah. a transformation of yeah. any kind yeah. comes with grieving of a part of you that Absolutely. needs to be released or you know let go of that's the power of being able to agree and that's a lot of what we're talking about in terms of thinking again right yeah i mean so much of us want to adopt new habits and adopt new ways of thinking and new perspectives and while that's great in a very important process of becoming and growing something that we often leave behind or forget to talk about is the process of, oh, if I am adopting new habits, that means I'm going to have to release old. I might have to release some old habits, yeah. And and we don't talk about or recognize the legitimate grieving that goes with that. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of times I don't think we allow ourselves to do that. To truly You you know, and it it reminds me of the process of a butterfly, right? Because we can all relate to or we have all heard about it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Where literally the the caterpillar goes into a chrysalis and in that chrysalis, every single cell of its body is completely metabolized, yep. like yep. completely disintegrated yep. and transformed into yep. something different. Yeah. And it's that internal process that we don't see that's important that we recognize within ourselves. Absolutely. You know, when he talks about thinking like a scientist, one of the central metaphors uh, that he has in the book is that uh, that's the way we should approach our beliefs. Mm-hmm. We, uh, to, you know, we should approach our beliefs like a scientist. So what do scientists do? They're mm-hmm. constantly testing the hypothesis, and they're willing to pivot when it appears that the data is, uh, is not 100% correct well, or is wrong. And, and even before all of that, the first step of the scientific process is observation. Yep. And yep. so for us, what that means is non-judgmental observation of our own thoughts and of our own behaviors and pro- emotions and processes. Non-judgmental observation. Right. Being able to step back and say, oh, I've been engaging in this thought process, this thought cycle, which then often results in me doing this behavior that really is not healthy for me or anyone around me. Absolutely. And so being able to step back and just first acknowledging that, right? Yep. And then, you know, taking that evidence, well, I'm actually hurting myself or others and being able to go back to the drawing board and say, okay, what can I change in you know, in my own chemistry, <laughs> yep. which is engaging with the thoughts and the emotions, right? Right. So rather than sticking to what we think we know, uh, it's better to view our knowledge as provisional and subject to revision. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's kind of thinking like a scientist. But the other thing that is very, very powerful that he talks about in think again Mm -hmm. is he talks about group think Mm. so he discusses and he and he says let's challenge group think so (laughs) he discusses how rethinking can benefit organizations and teams i mean how we've all probably had the experience of being part of a, an organization or part of a team if we've lived long enough and we've worked enough you know in enough 
organizational stuff. And, and, and this could be actual employment, but it also could be like members members of something in the community, right, a church or another organization. Or even if you're, yeah. on, you know, and if you're on a sports team. Yeah. Uh, again, mm-hmm. all of that is in play here. And, and all of that, there can be groupthink that comes in because groupthink can lead to stagnation. It can lead to failure. So what... Uh, Adam Grant kind of advocates for Mm -hmm. is uh, that leaders foster environments where questioning and debate are are encouraged rather than penalizing uh, dissent or different perspectives, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I'll never forget years, many, many, many years ago, um, I was I was not actually even quote unquote grown myself, mm-hmm. but I was teaching like a Sunday school class, uh, and th- there these were these were right at middle school, high early high school uh, kids, yeah. right. And one of the young, it was a large class, uh, and one of the young men uh, from a very you know, well-known family within the church, right in the middle of class, uh, raised his hand and uh, challenged, you know, (laughs) a a lot of what we were discussing, a Mm -hmm. lot of what we were, you know, and um, so I, I, you know, I, I had no training that, you know, that I would later get, right? Right. But my intu, my intuition said, you know, okay, well, don't shut the questions down. Encourage the the questions. Uh. And I decided that it was appropriate for me to share with uh, his family, specifically his mama. Yeah. Uh, you know, okay, well, you may want to talk about this because this is what was brought up today. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think, you know, this needs to be discussed. I would have no idea what happens because they pulled him out of class. Oh. They were mad at me for not shutting him down. Oh wow! And absolutely, they got they got very very upset with me um, for huh. not saying you can't. There's no question. There is no, no question. No this is, wow. and so mm-hmm. you know, um, I, I. Yeah, because people can get very fearful. Yeah. Yeah, and Which unfortunately, I I never understood that. I don't think that young man is uh, a member of of a church today. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Uh, but I, I would doubt it. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we're talking about thinking again. Adam Grant's wonderful book that stretches us all. And we're talking about it today here on Strategies for Living. Stay with us. More to come. You're going to see the difference. When you go to Azalea Cleaners, you'll hear about it too. Azalea Cleaners has been fine dry cleaning since 1958, plus laundry, alterations and repairs, comforters, wedding gown cleaning and restoration. You'll hear about it from your friends because they'll see it too. They'll notice the Azalea difference. Azalea is convenient. 732 Azalea Drive. 9220 Ellerby Road and 9227 Mansfield Road, plus the front door of your home or business with Azalea's delivery on demand. Just text SETUP to 249 8283, and Azalea will pick up your clothes and deliver them back clean and fresh to you. You can't get closer than that. That's the Azalea difference. You'll notice it right away. Others will too. The Azalea Difference. Fine dry cleaning since 1958. Text SETUP to 249-8283 and get the Azalea Difference. AzaleaCleaners.com. And welcome back. Welcome back into Strategies for Living. You know, we take growth serious here on Strategies. Mm -hmm. 1017 FM, 710 Kiel, Lauren Leon McMillan, David McMillan. And we are, uh, we're talking about a a wonderful book by Adam Grant today. It's called Think Again, The Power of Knowing, 
knowing what you don't know. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, we've talked about uh, we've talked about the value of rethinking. We've talked about the dangers of overconfidence. We've talked about uh, thinking like a scientist and challenging groupthink. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, um, we, you know, the, you said you had not heard the term. You were not familiar with the term no, groupthink. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Well, I mean, I could, uh, I could presume. Uh, you know, when you said groupthink, I'm thinking just collective thoughts. Right, uh, right. You knew, but you it's could, actually you could intuit what it what it means, right? Uh, well, yeah, but groupthink is actually a psychological specific to when the group values harmony over, like what you were talking about, over right. questioning, right, right, over um, peace, over <laughs> yeah, over con confrontation, yeah. of differences, I suppose. So, uh, one of the other things he talks about is learning to unlearn. Mm. So he highlights the importance of unlearning mm -hmm. outdated or incorrect information. Right. And so he suggests that shedding old ideas is just as important as learning new ones. Right. And that unlearning can prevent us from becoming trapped by obsolete knowledge. So learning to unlearn, I, I, you know, very interesting, um, thought provoking stuff here. Yeah. Well, and I, I think it is, um, very important for every one of us, especially <laughs> kind of, as you highlighted at the beginning of this program, especially now, I mean, if you haven't looked around, there's a lot of old programming, hmm. a lot of old beliefs that yep. are running rampant, not just within especially within individuals, I would assume, but we can see it now. We can see it all th throughout the right? society and throughout the world. Right. right? Which just is a, a, to me, is just screaming a, a big call to action for us to really examine our, our own, what's coming up internally that we, we can control, that we can change exactly, within ourselves. Exactly. I mean, you know, some of us, maybe some people saying, you know, you guys are hitting, hitting on some chords, but you may be saying, you know, but what can I do? Right. And so that's one of the things that Adam Grant, you know, I think is talking about in Think Again. Um, you know, well, what you can do, no, we, none of us can change what's going on in the world. And right? yet, if every single one of us, or, or not every single one of us, but a, at least a critical mass of us begin to truly examine, to truly go in and to unlearn and relearn for ourselves. How change we, the world within ourselves. Yeah, right. And if enough of us change the world within ourselves, that changes the world. That changes the world. Because we are the world. There's an just like the song just says. like the songs yeah. Yeah, the, there's an old proverb that says if everybody sweeps in front of their house mm -hmm. the whole street gets clean so you know um if it's to be it's up to me. perhaps it's up to me yeah. and you know we begin so that you know there's got to be a beginning point and i think think again offers you know at least a a, a, a possibility of a of a beginning point. He talks about building rethinking habits. Hmm. So to cultivate a rethinking mindset, which is what he wants us to, to, to have, he offers some practical strategies hmm. like seeking out challenge networks. These are people who will question your thinking <laughs> and, and also practicing confident humility. That's what he calls it. Confident humility, where you balance confidence in your abilities with an openness to feedback and new ideas. And so, you know, again, there's that B word, there's that balance word, right? Yeah. And I, I keep thinking about, you know, that confident humility and, and being able to rethink all of this really builds from the foundation of first knowing that you are not 
your thoughts. Mm, you are yeah. not your beliefs. Yeah. You know, it, you, we get, we're fact, not, but we get to choose them. You know, we get to choose which ones we hook into and hook onto. Right. Yeah. And, and in fact, we can become so identified. And I think this is what we see a lot in the world today, right? That people can become so identified with their beliefs that and, and that can cause a grasping a, a fixating on them right. because this is who i am yes and yeah. yet it's not right i liken beliefs almost to leaves on a tree to leaves okay yeah. be leaves, leaves to leaves and what better time than now right in during the, the, in the, the fall, fall is coming things are maybe we don't have a whole bunch of it yet oh here, we do but we have some oh, it's beginning do. if you look if you look around there are tons of leaves falling mm-hmm. every second mm-hmm. and in much the same way it's a it, it is a supportive season for us then mm. to also examine these beliefs right and rethink okay which ones am i willing to let go of right And knowing that even when the leaves, my beliefs, (laughs) fall to the ground, right? Right. I will still remain because I'm rooted in the ground like the tree. There you go. And knowing that as the leaf falls to the ground, it'll actually dissolve and benefit the rest of society because just as that leaf does, yep. becomes one with the soil and then regrows into something better. At, in the last section of the book, he talks about the application. Uh, again, the book is called Think Again. And he says, you know, there's applications in all kinds of leadership. It's certainly in education, but even, Lauren, in relationships. Sure. First so, and foremost, the yeah. world with ourselves. So to explore, he, the, the last section of, of the book explores how rethinking can be applied in across different domains. Leadership, as I said, education our personal relationships, marriages and friendships and, and even family mm-hmm. relationships. So, uh, and he, he, he gives some case studies uh, of successful folks and even successful organizations who have thrived by embracing a culture of rethinking and mm-hmm. a culture of learning to grow and innovate and, and basically uh, be resilient in the face of 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 change, right? Mm-hmm. Right. So, you know, th- he gives some strategies. So I'd I'd, I'd kind of like to shift. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we are our conversation. We are strategies <laughs> for living. So, uh, you How know, can we, we apply this. We won't. We certainly won't be able to cover all of the strategies that he's got packed into this book. But maybe we'll cover some of them that uh, you know will. Um, be useful for all of us and maybe even encourage some folks to go get the book. Mm -hmm. And if you do, it's called Think Again. It's uh, Adam Grant. It's been out for a little while. I think it came out in 2021 or so. And uh, it's got on Amazon, I looked, uh, it's got the vast majority of its rating are four and five star. It's got a ton of five star ratings and a lot of uh, 90 over 90 percent of its ratings are either five star or four star so to good me read. to me that's a good read yeah um, so one of the things that he talks about is embracing confident humility <laughs> so in other words recognizing that while you may have expertise or knowledge you also have limitations all of us do and so there's always no matter what and no matter who we are in what arena there's still more to learn so uh, you know how do we put this what are the strategies how do we put this into practice balancing confidence in your abilities with an openness to feedback and the willingness to change your mind Mm -hmm. when new evidence is presented to you yeah 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 and that's a delicate balance that you know we can spend uh, careers lifetimes you know really working on honing Hmm. Um, but i think that's worth the journey itself and in doing that, it's just about being able to recognize. Huh, there's that Re-cognize, word again, right? Rethink. Rethink. Think yep. again. Be able. The to very <laughs> word recognize is <laughs> right. really. Think and again. We think again. Yeah. Yeah. 
Because re means backer again. Yeah. yeah. And cognize, of course, is a thought. Yeah. Cognition. So recognize. And that's truly what happens in the brain, by the way. When we recognize someone, um, we actually have to think again. We have to pull it back out of Absolutely. Our yeah, that's exactly what is going on internally. A- and yeah. so to recognize that we're recognizing everything, right, yeah, yeah. And including the situations, events, and people, you know, that can be an important step in being able to um, re- rethink. Right? Yeah. He talks about thinking like a scientist. And, I, you know, I, I hear some maybe people out there saying, well, I'm not a scientist. I'm not trained as a scientist. You know, maybe other people that are and they're very he's, they're very comfortable <laughs> with this. But, you know, what does this mean? So it, 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 thinking like a scientist means approaching ideas and opinions and beliefs as hypothesis, mm. uh, plural, hypotheses, right. um, rather than as hard truths. Be- That's what con- scientists are, good scientists are constantly mm. testing, revising, testing, revising, taking a theory, testing, revising, testing, revising, mm-hmm. and it, it, constantly looking and searching for new evidence. Well, right. and because, you know, I like we often talk about what life is, right? It is L-I-F-E, limitless in formation, yep. experience, or experiment, right? Yep. And to know that your greatest experiment um, is yourself, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the greatest thing you can do is to become and to create a, the best version of, of you. you. Because you are the vehicle through which you experience the world, quote unquote, right? So how do you practice this? What are the strategies? Well, you regularly question your own assumptions and you seek data. Mm-hmm. You seek data, data to either confirm or challenge them. But be open. Be open to changing your mind as more as more information you know shows up as more information becomes available then that flexible open mind is extremely important absolutely yep talking about uh, the book think again it's by adam grant it's uh, fairly new you can find it wherever you buy books it's got a lot in it a lot packed in it we're trying to unpack a little bit of it today here on Strategies for Living. We've got more to come, so stay with us. More strategies coming back. Dealing with stress? Pain? Feel like you're running out of options? When your life is balanced, wellness is a given. True wellness is holistic. It's about the mind, the body, and the spirit, all in balance. Now, there's a place right here in Shreveport that's all about helping us achieve peak mental, emotional, and physical health. The Balanced Life, 117 Kings Highway, right next door to Strong's. Come see and feel the difference getting your life in balance can be. Many of your friends and neighbors have already learned the difference less stress and pain mean in their lives. You can book a discovery session right now online, thebalancedlife.us. All you've got to lose is stress, pain, or maybe both. Come see and feel for yourself the real difference balanced wellness makes. The Balanced Life Wellness Center, 117 Kings Highway in Shreveport, next door to Strong's, thebalancedlife.us. Hey, welcome back. Welcome back into 101.7 FM, 710 Kia. Welcome back into Strategies for Living. Lauren Leon McMillan, David McMillan. And we're talking about uh, Adam Grant's book today. It's called Think Again, uh, The Power of Knowing What You Don't Know. (laughs) Man search of a lifetime, right? What would our world be like if more of us embraced some of some of this? Mm. You know, I, some people are out there saying, well, it'd be full of chaos, David. 
<laughs> yeah, well, uh, okay. But have I you don't know. Out there right now, maybe. What do you, what do you call what's there yeah, now? Yeah, that's too <laughs> good point. Very, you know. very good point. So, um, you had more to say. We were talking before break about uh, he he talks about thinking like a scientist. Yeah. Um, you had a little bit more to say about that, I think. Yeah, I think because I think another really good you know application for this and it's it's a variation of things that i've used but i've also encouraged clients to use and and we've done it you know is a form of tracking Hmm. right and and for whatever it is you know i've um you can track your your moods you know if you're able to uh, put it on a number scale and you can track it at certain times of the day track how long you sleep you know and track Um, whatever it is that is concerning to you and be able to visualize that to see and find the patterns Hmm. just to be able to make sense of it and then also again very scientist oriented it it gives you even with emotions right it gives you a way to step back and say okay i you know i experiencing these emotions but just by putting them on a page as data points right Hmm. can help you put some distance there and be able to look at it um, from a non-judgmental place and just see the patterns yeah. and be, and then are, you're able to question and say, okay, what are the patterns I'm noticing and what do I want to do about that? One of the, one of the things he talks about is developing a challenge network. So mm-hmm. he means surround yourself with people who aren't afraid to, you know, question your ideas and the path that you consider your your perspectives it's interesting i'm I'm thinking about um abraham lincoln yeah which most people you know would put in you know in terms of ranking great presidents right Mm -hmm. um they'd rank him one two three they'd rank him way on up there because he saved the union one of the interesting things about lincoln uh and i think there was a book written on this Uh, probably more than one, but in his cabinet, he selected not people that thought like he Mm -hmm. did, but uh, he selected people who thought completely different from him, even to the point of uh, maybe even some of them identifying themselves as rivals of of his. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, (laughs) maybe, I don't know, Maybe that's part of why that's maybe that's part of the greatness, yeah. you know, that emerged in the in the life of Abraham Lincoln. So, you know, what's the strategies? Uh, how do you practice that? How do you put it into 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 practice? Well, seeking seeking out colleagues, seeking out friends or even mentors who will provide um, constructive criticism, encouraging debate, and even challenging. Challenging being willing to challenge our, our viewpoint. And this helps prevent an echo chamber mm-hmm. and, and what we were talking about earlier, that group think thing, right. right? Yeah, and I think any if you seek out any sort of professional help, that's part of you know, your part of the process. Part of the process. Yep. yep. As um, well. Yeah. I, you know, it's it, so if if your therapist is not, uh, you know, challenging you, mm-hmm. maybe you don't have the right, uh, you know, maybe you don't have the, and I'm not saying 100% of the no, time. Not always. Not always. Yeah, but, but, but if there's not uh, some challenges, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, that, that the, the therapist is bringing to you, you might want to rethink that relationship. Flipping it around, uh, you know, when I was, uh, you know, t- teaching uh, people uh, to become therapists, one thing I'd say is if you're not pissing off a certain number of clients, <laughs> then you've got to question what you're doing. Right. You know, it may not be practicing uh, good therapy, mm-hmm. you know, because that's part of what, you know, I think our our job is, is to put forth, hold up a mirror and say, OK, look at this. This is what this is what I'm hearing you say. Yeah, this is what I'm seeing you do. Um He says to rethink in three roles. This is interesting. Okay. He says to rethink in the roles of preacher, prosecutor, and politician. (laughs) Okay. Tell me more. (laughs) Okay. So these roles can um, hinder rethinking. Ah, 
Okay. When we preach our ideas uh, or when we prosecute others' uh, views or we campaign for approval, that's what preachers do, that's what prosecutors do, that's what politicians do. <laughs> he suggests shifting out of these roles and instead acting more into the role of a scientist. So he's asking, rethink three roles, preacher, prosecutor, politician. And, and, you know, again, you don't have to actually be in those roles. There are a lot of people who preach. There are a lot of people who prosecute. There are a lot of people who are politicians, but they're not actually you know, in those professions. No, and a lot of us yeah. have, you know, even if that's not our primary place that we come from, it, it could certainly be a part within us. Right. Whether we're aware of it or not, or right. we call it that or not, we definitely have those parts uh, within us. The strategies here and how to, how to put it into practice is to catch yourself when you're overly defending your own ideas or when you're attacking someone and instead focus on investigating the truth and consider be be willing to open your mind and consider all alternative views right right? because just considering or being open to other perspectives does not mean one that you have to agree or that you have to take them on all it does is open your world to again kind of back to his title right the power of knowing what you don't know right it's just about opening your viewpoint he he says you know he says to ask yourself the question, what would it take to change my mind? Hmm. So the the question itself opens the door to self-reflection and shows that you're willing to reconsider your own beliefs if the right conditions are, are met. So, you know, the strategy here is before engaging in dis- discussions or making decisions, identify what kind of evidence or reasoning would lead you to change your mind. And this primes you for flexibility. Hmm. There's, you know, we, we have not even, we've been going at this for almost an hour, <laughs> but we barely scratched the surface of it. Um, it's a good book, yeah. and I, he he has a lot that we haven't been able to get to about cultivating curiosity, mm-hmm. and he talks about uh, inviting argument dil- dilution, mm-hmm. and he also says we need to conduct regular idea audits. Mm-hmm. So I'll just leave that there and maybe let your curiosity bubble. Maybe if it bubbles enough, you'll get a copy of this book. Think again. Adam Grant is the author. We'll be back here on Strategies for Living in just a moment. Stay with us. Hey, let's talk about the Robinson Film Center. You know, I say it, I say it a lot. There's no place like the Absolutely Robinson. Absolutely there is not. 617 Texas Street, downtown Shreveport. You've got so much. You've got the movies. you got Abby Singer's Bistro on mm. the second floor of RFC, open for lunch and dinner Tuesday through Saturday. Newly remodeled. Absolutely. Great menu. RobinsonFilmCenter.org is the way you check it all out. You can go to RobinsonFilmCenter.org at any time and uh, find out what movies are showing. Here's the deal. You want to join the crowd, join the fun, become a member. When you become a member, you become a star. Mm -hmm. You get discounts on movies. You get concession upgrades. You get bistro deals. RFC, 617 Texas Street in downtown Shreveport. I'll say it again. There's no place like the Robinson. There is not, and I'm glad we have one right here. Absolutely. The Robinson Film Center dot O-R-G. Reading begins not in the classroom, but in your child's brain. I'm Donisa Walker with Learning Rx Report. If your child struggles to read, maybe he or she has trouble focusing or comprehending, Learning Rx Report offers a science solution to reading problems. Working one-on-one with your child, targeting his or her reading skills. Today, call Learning Rx Report. Make an appointment to have your child assessed. I know you want to help your child. So does Learning Rx Report. And welcome back. Welcome back into 1017 FM. 
710 Kia. Welcome back into Strategies for Living. Lauren Leon McMillan, David McMillan. And uh, what, you, what are you, the, the, the book, folks, is that we've been talking about today is Think Again. Adam Grant is the author. It's the power of knowing what you don't know. <laughs> what are you taking away from, um, this, this really is, a, a, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, mm-hmm. a book that is written for our time. It is. What are you, t- what are you taking away you know, from this today, Lauren? It reminds me of the old story of... Um, the the student who goes to the guru right uh, yeah and yeah. he continues to overflow the teapot yeah, right? and yeah. he gets upset about what are you doing and yeah. the guru says this is your mind yeah. right yeah. and it's too full yeah and so it's the ability you know to dump out to libate to yeah. dump out old beliefs and know that you can replenish them with something new yeah and the ability the ability to be to come open so many of us i think Uh, you know, are uh, trying to get through life on stuff that got downloaded to us Mm. that we've never questioned that we've, and, and, and I would argue that, and some people will be challenged by the idea. (laughs) What do you mean challenging something that my great grandparents, my grandparents, my parents uh, gave me well, you know, not challenging that, but until you challenge it within yourself, it's not your then voice. it's not yours. It's mm-hmm. somebody else's. It belongs to somebody else, and so I think that's why this is a very, very powerful idea. Think again, Adam Grant. Uh, wherever you buy books, you can get a copy of this, folks. Thank you, thank you for being with us here on Strategies for Living. We do this each and every day for you, and we can do it because of our wonderful sponsors, the Robinson Film Center and Isaiah Cleaners and Learning Rx and Pintail Roofing and the Balanced Life Wellness Center. If today, if today were the last day of your life, you only had one more phone call that you could make, who is it that you'd call? What is it that you'd say? And why are you waiting? (laughs) Make the call. For Lauren Leon McMillan, I'm David McMillan. See you next time right here on Strategies for Living.